please welcome Ms. Darlene Davenport. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm just checking you out. Look at this incredible audience. Are you guys having a good time? Yeah. Excellent. I'm, I'm so glad to be here. You know, there's so many things about the holiday season that I love. I love cooking. I love doing arts and crafts. I love making Yule logs. And I love telling stories. So I thought we, I'd tell you guys a story. But here's the thing about communication. You know, when somebody speaks to you, and they're not so enthusiastic. Maybe they're perhaps a little bit bored. And when they talk, you're not sure when they're very excited because they're kind of a little bit bored. Do you follow that? Yeah. Okay, good. So, and then there's people that are just over the top and they're ebullient and they're just sparking all over the place. We love like that. But the thing is, when it's written communication, you see all the punctuation. You see the bells and the whistles, the colons and all that stuff. So I'm going to explain a little bit more because I'm going to help you out when I tell you this story. So, here's the deal. When you see something like a period um, on a written page, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a verbal sound for that, and a period sounds something like this. Okay? And a dash sounds like this. Okay? An exclamation point is sort of a vertical dash with a period. Like that. A comma, well, a comma is like, but if it's quotation marks, there's two of those, two commas. There's, but if you're left-handed, like that. <laughs> Question mark is pretty challenging. Like that. And finally, a colon is just two little dots. You can put them on top of each other, or it doesn't matter, up and down, down or up. Whichever way you want to put them, that's up to you. So that's, that's, your, that's your little lesson there. And now I'm going to tell you a little, this is a New Year's Eve story, OK? Okay, good. Here we go. It was New Year's Eve, and Eleanor was dressed in a pretty blue, blue gown that sashayed when she walked across the room. She got the attention of every single man, and not so single ones, too. <laughs> At only 18 years old, Eleanor had come alone to her cousin Charlie's party and was hoping to meet his best friend, Jack. All she knew was that Jack was a good dancer. As the evening wore on, Eleanor grew more and more despondent. Where is Jack? Charlie, a little preoccupied with a cupcake named Betsy, shrugged his shoulders. I have no idea, but just keep looking. He said he was going to come. Suddenly, the music on the Victrola took over the room. Everyone was dancing on the dance floor, swinging and bobbing, cutting the rug. Eleanor's hand was seized and, without having any idea who was leading her, was yanked to the center of the dance floor. She looked up and didn't recognize his face. He was glowing and alive and grinning from ear to ear. Hello, Eleanor. How are you? You are so fetching. Would you like to dance? <laughs> Eleanor squealed with delight. <laughs> Suddenly, she was over her shoulders and spinning up over his shoulders and down through his legs. <laughs> Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy was in full swing and the crowd was circling them, laughing and clapping and enjoying the show. <laughs> Suddenly, bells and whistles and screams exploded. <laughs> it was midnight and New Year's had begun. <laughs> Happy New Year! <laughs> Filled the room. <laughs> The stranger planted a juicy one right on Eleanor's kisser. Oh, and by the way, my name's Jack. What's yours? Darlene, also known as Nancy Cartwright. <laughs>